Hi everyone, this is James Spencer, bringing to you guys another great story. And this one is about an amazing woman. And this amazing woman saved the Brooklyn Bridge and also broke the mold. That woman is Emily Roebling. Now our story takes place back in the 1800s. So in the 1860s, late 1860s, they wanted to build a bridge between Brooklyn and the island of Manhattan. Now at the time, they were two separate cities. So a man by the name of John Roebling uh, was put as chief engineer to build this to build this bridge. Now he uh, designs the bridge, and just before construction takes place, he gets injured, gets an infection, and dies. Now his son, who is also uh, an excellent engineer and uh, architect, steps in to pick up where his father left off. His name is Washington Roebling. So he's the chief engineer and everything's going well uh, the first few years. I mean, construction's hard, it's a really tough job. Well, a few years in, he gets hurt and he actually gets paralyzed and he's not able to really get out of bed and move around. So this kind of jeopardizes the whole project because he's the chief engineer. He can't go out there and inspect and uh, talk to people and see what's going on, make changes and so on. That's when his wife, Emily Roebling, now she's got no formal education as far as being an engineer or architect, doesn't know anything about uh, structural materials, any of this. She steps in and picks up where he left off. Now he's in bed. Now she becomes his his eyes, ears, mouth, feet, right? She becomes everything. She becomes a field engineer and co-chief engineer. She's got to go out there every day. She's got to deal with vendors. She has to inspect work. She has to make sure everything is being done right. She has to deal with politicians. She takes on a monumental task. She does this for about 11 years, which is huge. Now, during this 11 year period, things didn't go so smoothly. There was a point where they wanted to kick her husband off as chief engineer and get somebody else in there. She goes down to the American Society of Civil Engineers and gives them a speech and motivates them to the point that they allow her husband to remain as chief engineer and effectively her as being not only chief field engineer but co-chief engineer. In 1883 the bridge gets finally completed. And because of all her hard work she's allowed to cross the bridge first. And she doesn't just stroll across, oh no, she does it in style. She's in a horse-drawn carriage and she's carrying a rooster. A rooster is a symbol of victory and she proudly crosses the bridge for the first time. And not only does she cross that bridge, she opens up the doorway for women. Now this is back in a time, women didn't even have the right to vote. This is like, this is over 40 years before women even had the right to vote. She was the first, not only civil engineer, but she was the first civil female civil engineer who built the world's biggest bridge at the time helped build the world's biggest bridge at the time. And it's because of this monumental feat and her smarts and fortitude that I bring the story to you guys. Now I've crossed the Brooklyn Bridge probably a thousand times. And every time I do, I admire and marvel at the amazing feat that this was. Now I might be a little biased because it is my favorite bridge, but my hat's off to uh, Emily Roebling. I'm glad she was there to keep everything together and to see the project through. Well, that's my story for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you do, click subscribe and please share your comments below. I'd really love to hear from you guys. Thank you.